Now, let me tell you this. There are negative, demonic, and satanic encounters. Pay attention. I must tell you this. For instance, there are many people today in deception and the confidence that their deception thrives on is the encounters that they had. There are many people who believe they went to heaven. I tell you by the authority of scripture, where they went was not heaven. I can tell you this. Both the description, the experience and the result tells you it's not heaven they went to. There are people today who claim they had out-of-body experiences and many of them interacted with strange spirits, familiar spirits. They thought it was the Holy Spirit. Do you know that almost every error in the body of Christ today came as a result of these same encounters? Many people will tell you I had an encounter either with an angel or a spirit and he told me right. And from there they begin to ship in and advocate all kinds of error. People have gone to fast for days and they met a spirit because you see I'll be sharing with you that one of the principal triggers for encounter is hunger. Hunger. When you find a believer who is hungry, please be fast to guide that person because Satan too looks for hunger. Hunger is proof of health. When people are sick, the first thing they lose is appetite. So you want to start on a journey. I want to know you. I want to live for you. I want to serve you. I want to love you with all my heart. That drives you to a seven days dry prayer and fasting. And you are praying, you are lying down, you are rolling left, right and center. And Satan finds an opportunity. Your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit are heightened because of that kind of consecration. And Satan comes as an angel of light and plants all kinds of demonic and dangerous seeds. I will tell you why I'm teaching what I'm teaching tonight. It's very important encounters are powerful encounters are important but if i do not give you a few guidelines because i fear for my generation our appetite for rema our appetite for new dimensions our appetite for the angelic realm our appetite for the prophetic realm is is driving us into dimensions that if not guided you have not yet seen error that will come to the body i tell you in the next five six ten years if we do not create this apostolic guidance for the body of christ many young people will delve into different Friend versions of error you will not even know what is authentic Christianity again are we together years ago in Zaria I remember I think I've shared it here. I don't know if I've shared it here there were some gentlemen who came in I think from Kano also one gentleman just came believing he was Jesus not a servant of Jesus believing he was Jesus and based on their revelation they believed that i was like their john the baptist so they came and together with the boys I, jokes apart i really mean it i wouldn't stand here if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking after service this boy stood wore a regalia and then someone was standing by his side I don't, know, I don't know what they call that one now and then when they stood before me i thought they were cracking jokes with me i was even laughing even though i was tired until i found out they were not playing now do you know listen 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 do you know those boys started with prayer hmm. prayer does many things so you have to understand the side effects of being open to the realm of the spirit and i will teach you how to create that guidance encounters in i've started by appreciating encounters but I am telling you, there, there, is, there is a management system that must be introduced fast because the body of Christ is in trouble. And it's encounters that will lead to the error of this generation of believers. Encounters. Satan has programmed arsenals of error that will be shipped to the body of Christ through encounters. Pseudo-Christian experiences 
pseudo ex angelic experiences pseudo heavenly experiences and they bring all kinds of destructive doctrines with full assurance there are people today who hear voices they stepped into the prophetic and the holy ghost has never been part of any revelation most of those revelations come from demons do they hear well yes sir they hear now i'm not being listen listen when you when you are here don't just be listening and thinking of any man of god i'm teaching the body of christ because most of the people you see when you hear this some of us already have preconceived biases and the bias is because we've never really been serious with god it's not because we are passionate we've not been serious with god so anything that looks supernatural we fight it i'm not endorsing your laxity There are all kinds of errors. Those errors continue to be translated into teachings. You see, the thing about encounters is that every time you have an encounter, the urge to document it and to share it is there. And we live in a generation right now that is passionate with giving applause. Anything that is scarce, anything that is new, anything that looks like rema, it looks like you derive your respect in the body of Christ from the scarceness of your communication. If we are not careful, there will be bitter casualties. I tell you this by the Spirit. Many people are beginning to ship doctrines of demons and communicate them and many people keep swallowing it hook line and sinker satan is doing this because he knows that the spirit of revelation we're coming there when i teach you this you will know why we need the spirit of revelation mm. hallelujah there was a man of god many years ago I didn't have a direct relationship with him but we were so blessed by his teachings he was an amazing man he taught well he taught powerfully his teachings were powerful he was some somewhere around Asia eventually when I started studying his teachings after some time he started having all kinds of strange encounters and one day I had to say uh-uh 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 uh -uh, uh -uh, something 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 is wrong this guy began to teach all kinds of concepts he began to manifest attributes that i knew there were problems with today as i talk to you i'm not even sure he's in ministry again powerful man of god sincerely so i don't know what happened because of this search for encounters let me construct what i'm saying so you'll understand number one encounters are important we need encounters so that they create convictions but number two encounters are a two a two-edged sword on one hand they can bless and lift but on another hand they can bring conviction towards error that destroys are we together so people have delved into all sorts of things young believers especially have delved into all kinds of things there are people who have bought all sorts of books you get into a christian library right now and you look at the books that are there sometimes you want to run away because you see certain books the moment you open you wonder was it the holy spirit who inspired this there are dangerous and devilish books there are people who have read certain books and while they were reading the next thing they woke up and found out they had been lost they went into realms and dimensions interacted with strange spirits and came do you know how many religions are in the world we live in an internet age i give you as an assignment when you go type religions how many religions are in the world enter you will be amazed let me tell you this every single one of those religions have followers if they did not have followers they would not thrive enough to be seen as a religion and those followers came because of a semblance of results that came from encounters this is the secret that can preserve a destiny can preserve a ministry so that you don't start something and after 10 years you are teaching something else and at a point you don't even understand what you are doing again why do encounters have negative side effects 
also i will tell you why because you see encounters especially if they are supernatural visionary encounters now you have to understand that an encounter does not have to be visionary to be called an encounter you can have an encounter without a vision once it is supernatural and it can imprint reality and conviction it's called an encounter are we together now but now i'm talking about visionary encounters do you know if you are open to the realm of the spirit there are many things that begin to happen to you immediately you are open to the realm of the spirit number one you'll find out that being open to the realm of the spirit either by the holy ghost or any other spirit already gives you an advantage over the earth realm whether it is true divination or it is true genuine spiritual encounter with the holy spirit the moment you are open to the realm of the spirit you already have an advantage above the ordinary believer number two the modus operandi of the earth realm is not the same as the realm of the spirit for instance in the realm of the spirit i do not have to talk to you to know what i'm saying i can transfer my thoughts directly to you without speaking if i hold this plant in the realm of the spirit i don't have to study it biologically you see that now yes i can transfer the feeling of that plant and have the impulse of that understanding you have to understand how i'm giving you certain examples in the realm of the spirit time and distance does not operate the way it works here if i need to move from here to this fan i will have to walk but in the realm of the spirit i can be here and immediately leave this spot and i am there an example what happens to you when you are in a dream you can be in a dream and in one moment you are in a house and then the scene changes you are somewhere else the same you and yet you are still there lying down in your room are we together now now in the realm of the spirit the holy spirit listen carefully the holy spirit is not the only one who has information any spirit at all including the devil has some information that is higher than this earth realm are we together now you would learn that there were times the bible records how that these these fallen angels came and the bible says they had interactions with the daughters of men they did not just come and meet them and produce giants out of them there were things that they taught them there were certain forbidden knowledge that was given to them satan himself is not an ignorant spirit i hope you know that because satan was once in heaven number two it was not satan alone that fell in heaven he fell with other spirits and there is no record of eroding the memory of the things that they know they still have that knowledge many people have interacted with strange spirits entered into all kinds of fraternities and covenants with them in exchange to superior knowledge they have used it in it they have used it to advance technology they have used it in different forms and in different fashions and some of them are honest enough to tell you that it was not just the making of themselves they were assisted by the realm of the spirit so when you are open to the realm of the spirit you will encounter many things can i tell you this if you do not know the road to go to a place and you find me there i can lead you anywhere and tell you that's where you were to go to this is what is happening to many people so they are open to the realm of the spirit because of the energy that is exerted through fasting and prayer spiritual exercises the moment you do that it is easy to have that ascendance in the spirit but the challenge is when you are there now satan is more than happy to hold your hand and usher you and he will give you a tour that is not consistent with the character of christ we return with some of these experiences and because we do not have a system of verification this is also the reason why there is a lot of inaccuracy even in the prophetic because the prophetic works by the same formula you are open to the realm of the spirit and you capture speakings sights and sounds from the realm of the spirit but when there is no system to order and organize it based on scripture you can download all kinds of things that's why some work some don't work because they are a capture of mass information from the realm of the spirit 
what i'm teaching you may look a bit complicated but just pay attention you will understand what i'm saying the realm of the spirit operates with similitudes and you must understand not the activity but the spirit the meaning of those activities because one of the reasons why error has come into the body of christ is because most times we want to repeat exactly what we saw happen in the realm of the spirit so i give you an instance if in the realm of the spirit i i look at these people in the realm of the spirit and i see them maybe dancing or doing some kind of thing i may not stay to decipher the essence of what was happening i will come down and want to act out the same thing i saw so if i see someone walking five times from the realm of the spirit it may be a prophetic typology of something but then i come physically and i now say well based on what i saw except if god says to act it out but i now tell the person do what you saw and by the time that person leaves and gets result someone else will come and before you know it it will become a spiritual pattern are we together now yes someone will now go to his house and say for me to get a miracle i must walk around five times with no understanding when god began to open me up to encounters i became troubled myself once upon a time those days in zaria there was such a move of the spirit and people started having extraordinary encounters where they would have what you know to be gold dust silver dust physically gold dust will begin to appear and it, there is an encounter that happened like that one time in church history it began to happen in several places and people started idolizing those encounters it didn't last more than three weeks and god seized it till tomorrow it was an act of his mercy otherwise some people would have built monuments around it you see that now there is a serious disclaimer listen do you know why i'm teaching you this don't just get believers born again and start stretching them fast 21 days fast 30 days unguided and unassisted it looks like an accurate spiritual journey but you are about to lead the people into experiences that their maturity cannot handle they will interact with devilish spirits they will return with arrogance from that encounter until the fatality that happens in their future brings you to remorse you now regret the fact that you expose the people this way we have to be careful there is a pattern for spiritual growth and if we do not submit ourselves to it we will be in trouble when jesus christ began to walk with the disciples we must follow the order and the pattern that he used to build the saints are we together now yeah. supernatural encounters the realm of a spirit is a very vast realm full of all kinds of possibilities having said this the bible itself listen carefully the bible provides a road map into profitable spiritual encounters the bible scripture provides a road map into profitable spiritual encounters that means that it is possible for you to enjoy supernatural encounters benefit from them and yet not bring error out of them to deceive the body remember the morale of this teaching is to help us experience encounters one of the graces that we have enjoyed and we enjoy in this ministry is the grace for encounters but i will tell you why it has been effective without birthing all versions of error almost all encounters if left unbalanced will bring error almost all encounters if left unbalanced or in, how do i put it now is, is it unbalanced will bring all kinds of error the body of christ today is like a patient in icu and encounters have brought these kinds of imbalance there are men and women of god today who will die believing what they are doing because it came from encounters there are individuals today who will die believing what they are doing because it came from encounters 
and you see one thing about conviction is conviction will always lead to influence the moment you are convicted about something eventually someone will believe you I hope you're understanding what I'm teaching so far yes so the Bible provides a biblical roadmap to supernatural encounters this was the first thing the Lord began to teach me that before I am open to these extraordinary spiritual experiences I must understand the pattern of Scripture so that all of these encounters I have will pass through the sieve of the word the sieve of how God behaves let me tell you there are many encounters in my life that scripture has filtered you will never hear me share them I have met many many demon spirits but it may just be one or two occasions that you hear me say that because you see when you are teaching this is the reason why most times I do not like to talk about my encounters do you know why I do not want you to build your conviction based on those encounters alone I want you to build your conviction based on these foundational encounters that I want to show you the average believer today who is exposed to the apostolic and prophetic ministry for instance will feel bad feel insulted and even feel unspiritual if they are not seeing visions it's almost like a stigma to your spiritual experience how long have you been born again 10 years do you see do you hear well not exactly I hear the Holy Ghost sometimes well, ah, I say, my goodness my God that means something is wrong with your Christian experience so in a bid in a bid to honor um, what you call your pursuit for spiritual growth there is such an itch and an appetite for any extra anything that just just let me hear a sound let me see a being demonic or spiritual let me just see something and hear something and because of that hunger on one hand God intends to give you these encounters but the reason why for many of us God does not bring those encounters is because you have not been taught how to decipher encounters to profit from them it's not because your spiritual level has not reached there God just wants to help you he's withdrawing these encounters is an act of mercy to help you stay true to doctrine are we blessed this is how the Lord taught me the apostolic and the prophetic ministry will expose you to various encounters you will not believe how many things I've seen standing here and preaching if I did not have this understanding that I'm teaching you you will never almost be able to settle down and teach a correct sermon every sermon will be turned to revelation because as for sight you will keep seeing the discipline to be able to turn down these things and focus on doctrine to mentor believers many sincere people do not have that every time their eyes see something there is an urge to say what they are seeing and it becomes a distraction to mentoring believers so you see that services become full of just revelatory processes not revelation of scripture prophetic revelations and there is a place for that don't get me wrong except that after a while you see that believers don't mature again and then the body of Christ also has been baited into that state of that spiritual state when you come and sit down and the truth is being taught that interest to endure doctrine is not there again apostle this is 30 minutes you've not seen anything so pastors and ministers are under pressure if you want membership be ready to see something or say something I don't care what you know if you are not seeing and you are not saying anything be ready for empty pews we must balance this if you go to pray with someone and you bring Bible verses and you tell the person Acts chapter this verse this says this you, you, you can even see the disconnect we wasted our time prepared honorarium cooked food to come and receive this rubbish there you see that there, there is something wrong while you are laughing I want you to pay attention you may not see the effect now let it continue down the line that's why people lie even with the prophetic because there has to be a way that pressure makes people lie we say things God is not saying this is a message for the body of Christ when a man of God can teach scripture 
and help you understand the ways of God. He's under pressure because he looks like a fatal failure as far as ministry is concerned. I don't know what happened to your eyes and your ears, but we're not interested. And very clearly the person becomes frustrated. And as a result, he will say, you know what? If this is the formula for relevance, let me go for my fasting. And the devil says, exactly, this is what I wanted. He waits for you. And once you are done with your fasting and all of that, he now shows up and begins to introduce you into all kinds of things. You find out that the more you see, the more you are deviating from God's patterns. Many people did not start the way they are now. Let me tell you, I submit to you, it's difficult to live in the realm of encounters and still be sound and detailed. This is what I want to teach you now. There is a roadmap that if you follow, if you follow, you will never mislead the body through encounters. Your encounters will profit you and then profit the body. If you are operating in the prophetic here, please listen to me. Because this, is, this particularly will help you. Number one, no encounter is equal to doctrine. No encounter, no visionary encounter automatically becomes a doctrine. Do not make doctrine out of encounters. Listen, encounters are, they, they are classified in a category of dealings called personalized dealings. Personalized dealings means that it's God's way of working with you to help you to be effective. It will profit the body of Christ, but do not turn encounters into doctrines. So, there is a reason why these doctrines were put here in scripture. And if we violate them, do you know what will happen? we will start creating pseudo-Christian experiences that are not exactly God. Number two, every encounter must submit to scripture. Every encounter, you must vet your encounters from the lens of scripture. Every encounter, no matter, even if it's Jesus you see, any encounter must submit to scripture. no matter how extraordinary that encounter is number three you interpret encounters listen carefully or let me put it this way scripture becomes your lens for interpreting encounters do not interpret encounters with feelings you must go to scripture for instance two of us can have a vision i can see a chain in the spirit you can see a chain too it means different things to both of us we cannot create i'm saying this with every sense of respect and responsibility to the body of christ there are people who god has helped to bless the body in whatever capacity and we honor them but there is a big mistake do not say every time you see chains it means bondage it is not true you have to go to the bible to get your explanation not your mind a chain does not always mean bondage nakedness does not always mean shame so by the time i put all these things if you see a chain bondage if you see nakedness shame nakedness can mean intimacy it can mean you are growing with the holy ghost the holy spirit and scripture has to interpret that are we together now most people just come up with their ideas about encounters this is what i saw this is what i saw i think this should be it and we ship it down and mislead people that includes dreams look up please when you wake up from a dream you don't just go and buy a book to interpret it except if that book submits to scripture are we together now many belief systems that have authorized satan to destroy us today came from these dreams and encounters yourself in this glory is exposing you to the realm of the spirit and you must be guided by scripture so that we do not have all kinds of error that come and then you connect the error to koinonia you say it was when i came for koinonia i fell under the anointing and i was in the realm of the spirit this is what i saw this is how i came and you see the way the devil does it is he will take advantage of this atmosphere to mislead you when you now tell someone it was in koinonia that thing started he will usually believe you and respect you but up you go into the realm of error
are you blessed I have kept these four encounters and I pay attention to them my entire life these are the encounters that have become pillars that guide me as I approach the realm of the spirit and I'm introducing you to this and this is also a message to the body of Christ these encounters that I'm about to list and maybe briefly just touch they supersede any other encounter listen if these are the only encounters you have in your life and you never have any vision again in your life you will still fulfill your god-given mandate the foundational encounters that every child of god or everyone on earth should have are you ready for this have you understood everything i've said so far yes I want you to appreciate these things that we teach because number one they are consistent with scripture but number two some of these trainings came from a standpoint of pain blood and tears I'm praying that you will place value on them some of you what I'm saying you may not need it now until you keep rising one day you will see and thank the Lord that you got this doctrinal balance even as you approach the realm of the spirit some of you as I share this with you the Lord will use it to give you hope and give you confidence as far as your Christian experience is concerned four encounters the Lord taught me number one the first encounter that every believer must have is encounter with Jesus the son of the living God please write it down it does not mean a visionary picture of Jesus you can have an encounter through scripture an encounter through the word of salvation with Jesus the son of the living God please write it down just be patient and write it down the Bible says in John chapter 3 and verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son. He says that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Can I tell you this? No matter how many visions you see in your life, if you do not have an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God, you are going to hell. It's as simple as that. Encounters don't redeem people. It is Jesus that redeems people encounters don't give people eternal life it is the son of the living god so if you have 30 encounters in your life and jesus is not part of them you are on your way to hell ladies and gentlemen please hear me this is this these are safety nets an encounter with the son of the living god the first encounter that the hunger of any living being would push him to in that order is an encounter with the son of the living God it is a foundational encounter you must have you must pray that everybody around your life your church they must have that encounter what does it mean to encounter the son of the living God that the Holy Spirit through the ministry of the gospel will furnish the reality of the love of jesus the love of the father to your heart and bring you to a point where you accept the truth of his substitutionary sacrifice are we together now to the end that you receive of his life eternal life the bible says it's an encounter this is the record that God hath given us eternal life and this life is in his son. He says, whosoever hath the son hath life eternal. Everybody say encounter with the son. There are many people today, I'm sorry to use this expression, but even people in ministry, who operate the prophetic but have not had this encounter i hope you know that yes there are people who came just from tradition and then they came into the city and just continued what they were doing an encounter with the son of god i know people who started having visions and had prophetic inclinations even before they got born again yes that is a possibility your very wiring your very prophetic wiring can tilt you to the prophetic and people can begin to recognize it some of you know people like that in your villages 
they are sincere people they don't practice any evil that you know but we call them seers they have eyes that see they can tell you be careful and what they say will happen exactly so can i tell you those same people need encounters the encounter with the son of the living god this is doctrine if you do not have an encounter with the son of the living god you are in trouble why because no other encounter sustains the power to save you and translate you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of god's dear son my brothers and my sisters no matter how long you fast no matter how long you pray no matter how many realms and dimensions you step into even if you go to heaven even if it's the true heaven and you come down if you don't have an encounter with the son of the living god you are going to hell it's as simple and honest as that are we learning the first foundational encounter that every believer must have encounter with the son of god number two very quickly the second encounter is an encounter with the person and the ministry the ministry of the holy spirit in that order second only to your encounter with the son of the living god you need an encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit please look up the ministry of the holy spirit is not for pastors the ministry of the holy spirit is not for preachers it's not just for some supernatural people the ministry of the holy spirit is for everybody jesus told us that he is the only shorty to have been guided he says when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth satan can use truth to destroy it's not only a lie that destroys the truth can destroy too Many believers have not been introduced into this encounter with the person of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> An encounter with the Holy Spirit is more than praying in tongues. No. Just because hands were laid on you and you are praying in tongues, when we say, have you met the Holy Ghost, you say yes. No. 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 Just because you have eaten someone's food does not mean you've met the person. No, you benefited from the person. But have you met the person? Can I tell you this? Especially for those of us who are called into ministry. All those who have been mightily used by God from scripture and modern history and even today will tell you they can trace their exploits to this one encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We've dealt with that here so I don't want to go so deep into that. The Holy Spirit realized the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is not an archangel. The Holy Spirit is not one of those winds flowing in the realm of the Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit is God. You can encounter his office. When you are encountering the Son, he plays a role there. But you can en encounter the person of the Holy Spirit.